Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia and today we're kicking off our new Total War 3 Kingdom Let's Play featuring the Yellow Turbans and the faction we're going to play is Huang Shao, the wielder of Heavenly Ways. Now I recently announced that I'm going to start this Let's Play because uh, Creative Assembly has decided to delay the DLC till next year, uh, till the Lunar uh, New Year, which will be January 25th this year, so it should come out somewhere in late January. Uh, this gives us plenty of time to start a new Let's Play, and since we previously have not played the Yellow Turbans at all, I decided we might as well play a Yellow Turban Let's Play on the channel. And most of you have spoken and voted heavily in favor of Huang Shao, the wielder of Heavenly Way out of these three possible Yellow Turban Generals. And the reason you guys have given me is that he has the hardest starting position. So, clearly no one wants me to have fun. But if we take a look, uh, Huang Shao is a scholar. His faction bonus is minus 15% upkeep for a range unit. Uh, this is not only his range unit, but everyone's range unit in his faction. So that's quite nice. Considering that uh, if you see my playstyle, I heavily prefer range units because I believe they are uh, pretty overpowered in Total War Three Kingdoms. You also get six morale, which is not really a big deal for yellow turbans because a lot of them would have unbreakable uh, on the unit. Faction specialization. Dominion of Huang Shao. It increases character experience, which is nice because yellow turban characters um, scale very well with their level because of the skills that they have brings faction-wide bonuses uh, regardless, and you get a lot of characters. And it also increases your research rate, which is something new if you've never played yellow turbans. Uh, rather than getting a free reform uh, every spring, you actually have to spend research time to research new uh, reforms. And this is quite similar to uh, our Eight Princes Let's Play, where we did something very similar. So Huang Shao gets bonus research rate, which is nice. So his focus is on research and wisdom, and wisdom, I guess, implies character experience here. Unique features, he has the Garden government building chain. This is just the additional building chain that he gets. It increases research rate and satisfaction and nothing else. So this is more of a, like a luxury building of when you are scaling towards more research and satisfaction for your generals. Um, I don't envision us building this right away just because we need to get our economy up to speed. Seek talented individuals. So we have a unique assignment where we can increase the chance of finding exceptional characters. Now what I have experienced from my limited experience with Yellow Turbans, I have tried a few of them, but never played a full campaign. So that's this is going to be a learning experience for us all. Uh, but you are always going to have tons of characters, so I don't know how useful this will be. You tend to get a lot of characters regardless playing as Yellow Turbans. And he has a unique uh, unit. Uh, technically, these aren't unique units. These are just higher tier units that you start out with. Uh, because these units typically are locked on the reform tree uh, till quite late in the game. Each of the three factions will have one unit unlocked. And for Huang Shao, who specializes in range units, we get the Archery Masters. Now these guys are kind of the um, light version of Onyx Dragons. They have great base damage, uh, good range, 225, which is uh, more than the typical Archers, which is usually only at 200 range. But as you can see, it's less than the 250 on the Onyx Dragons and the 250 on the Crossbow units. Um, still very good units, something we can start to use uh, in the beginning of the game. It outranges typical archers, which will make them quite useful in sieges. And we get one noteworthy character, Pei Yuan Shao. Uh, he is a veteran. Uh, very nice. There's three main classes of Scholar, Veteran, Healer, and we'll take a look at them in the game. And how the Yellow Turban factions work is that obviously everyone else hates us at the start of the game. Uh, there are three of us on the map. And whenever, uh, let's say, He Yi's faction get destroyed, He Yi will enter into our recruitment pool and we can grab them. So technically, we can end up with He Yi, Gongdu, and Huang Shao in the same uh, faction. And we're going to be playing this on our standard legendary legendary 40 minute battle timer. So let's just jump in here and take a look at Huang Shao's start. <laughs> Jian 
汉室起于姬心之上，天爵言流，汉作以终，天下早已改其意志，皇上早已迫不及待，百姓从此将出头翻身。主公，都城已被董卓老贼付之一炬。此等弄权乱臣，妄图改天篡命。如今洪水肆虐，恶殍遍野，实乃天怒人怨之兆。天下各路诸侯合兵一处，抗击董贼。他们亦是我的敌人。汉室之中，以公谋私、贪腐堕落之徒，皆不能留。汉家东南领土，或有可乘之机。主公，何不从此处入手？百姓苦不堪言，定要有人拯救黎民苍生。苍天已死，黄天当立，主公必当一统四海，率百姓。All right, and uh, we kickstart our campaign. Establish our power. Uh, claim high empire regions and annex other yellow turbans. So, the typical yellow turban rebellion, which is a separate faction, uh, their land we can annex, um, and be wary of Yuan Shao and Liu Bei. Okay. Our first mission is to defeat an enemy force. Uh, the reward is a little different. Uh, here we get an upgraded uh, version of uh, Kindred Jian, a pair of uh, swords, basically. And a uh, bonus experience for Huang Shao, our faction leader. Defeat any enemy force. Doesn't have to be the one in front of us. And we get a second mission. Uh, th uh, through study and reform, greater heights are reached. So this one is Researcher Reform, which is a new mechanism, and the reward is Book of Heavens for Huang Shao. Now Book of Heavens, as we can see here, is a gold tier item. Uh, 10 Expertise, 10 Cunning, 8 Satisfaction, plus 10 Character Experience for all characters in Local Commandery, plus 5% Income from all sources in Local Commandery, and minus 10 Corruption uh, in Local Commandery. This seems to be a very overpowered item. Now I haven't played Huang Shao in a long time, and uh, from what I remembered, you could mess up this mission if you reach the next tier of your faction level. Uh, the faction level is quite different for Yellow Turbans as well, we'll go over that. Um, so we're going to be careful uh, as we research our first reform because I really don't want to miss out on this item. Alright, let's take a look at our starting position here. So you do start with quite a bit of land. We have Dong, a small city here. Uh, we have Taishan, a town. And we have Henei, which is a farmland. Now our faction is split north and south of the Yellow River, uh, which is something I don't like. Um, typically, I would say we are probably just going to end up giving up on Henei. I'm not looking to expand north. Um, I mean, we could. Uh, we have a lot of options. We could expand north right away, give up on our land down south, but clearly these two are the more valuable pieces of our territory, given that they are a small city and a town, and this is just a farmland which only produces food while costing us quite a bit of upkeep. Um, so we're probably just going to give this one up. And if we look at our army, we have Huang Shao leading a force right here outside of Taishan. And we have a Han Empire army here for us to kill in the beginning. And Pei Wan Shao, our other legendary character here, is defending Dong with another sizable force. Now all these units are very new. Uh, we probably have to look at each one of them carefully so we know what's going on. But if we take a look at all our characters, we also have another uh, officer in our court, uh, Guan Hai. Uh, he is a veteran. He's a philosopher. So veteran is his class, philosopher is his background, and uh, these give plus five percent research rate. And I don't think you need to make them your leader error or uh, faction leader. This just is added on to your uh, faction bonus. So you get the five percent just by having him in your court, which is really nice. This is very similar 
to a lot of yellow turban playstyle. The more officer you have, the stronger your faction becomes. You scale very, very well. Uh, and because he's a follower, so these are the ranks for yellow turban generals. Now these ranks go up uh, over time and can be uh, celebrated by friendship with the faction leader. So if you put them in your faction leader's army and they develop a nice friendship, becomes uh, friends or um, what's it called? Sworn brothers. Uh, Oathorns, that's what's called. Yeah, they level up quicker and the level goes from a follower to a pupil, student, academic, attendant, devoted student, enlightened student, and Xian. Now Xian is basically uh, God. So basically, humans can be ascended to God by becoming Xian. Um, it's a Chinese thing, a Taoism thing. Um, but this gives one very good bonus in that it's minus 100% character salary. So these characters that are follower are completely free. And you get different bonuses as you level up. And if we look at Pei Wenshaw, he's also a follower. We'll see how these develop as time goes on. And you can see their skill trees also very different. Uh, it used to be just uh, you know lines across and two lines uh, across the top and bottom. Now we have this, I guess, a rake shape type of thing. Uh, it just looks very different. You also get very different skills. So as we play our Yellow Turban campaign and as I gain a better understanding of things, I would be definitely putting out new guides as well to cover the Yellow Turbans. Uh, skill guides, background guides and uh, maybe command rebuilding guide as well we have done one overview command rebuilding guide for yellow turban so far uh, i still remember some of that um, i'm gonna try to implement that in our uh, builds for our commanderies and then we're also going to be continuously putting out new guides as this game goes forward and a general announcement for the game uh, we're going to do new let's play episodes on monday wednesday and friday and the assassin's creed uh, let's play will shift to uh, tuesday thursday saturday schedule uh, we'll leave Sunday open. Uh, probably going to do something different on Sundays. So that's the announcement. Uh, the extra day will give you guys time to watch it, comment, and uh, leave your suggestion in the comment section below. And we're going to do the same thing where once a unit becomes level 10, uh, I'm going to open up to the comment section to rename these units. Um, don't worry. If you are watching the episode late and you want to rename a unit and uh, you put the comment in and it's ready a couple episodes down the line. I will still uh, retroactively uh, put your unit name in whenever I see the comment. So feel free to name units um, once they reach level 10, of course. And that's all the announcement, I think. I think we can get ready to start playing. Um, if we look at the faction, it's a very different structure here. We start out as devoted and we gain uh, new tiers of our faction rank by adding enlightenment level. Now, enlightenment points are same as prestige points, but they're gained very differently. You gain an enlightenment point from your characters, uh, from certain buildings, and from reforms. So that's how you gain enlightenment here. And each tier adds very different bonuses as well. So typically you get new armies and you get assignments, which is very typical. And then you see that characters do not have desire for higher office. Well, that's something very different. And you also gain additional diplomatic relationship with all yellow turban factions. That's your other yellow turban brothers, which shouldn't be a problem. You guys are spread out very wide on the map, so it's hard for you guys to get into conflicts early on. You also gain replenishment rate, which is quite nice. Uh, as you can see, if you go up uh, to healed, you gain more army, more assignment, uh, more diplomatic points, more replenishment, but here's the key. You unlock the diplomatic option to make peace with regular factions. So before we become healed, we cannot be uh, even negotiating peace with all these people who are at war, right? If any of these factions declare war on us or are at war with us, we can't even make peace with them until we become healed. So our diplomatic option in game is very limited as Huang Shao or as any of the yellow turban factions so don't even think about these trade deals uh, that's just not going to happen and if we go up to empowered we unlock the diplomatic option to make trade deals with regular factions so before this point we're not even going to be able to do this and something else new here is we get available local leader positions local leaders you can think of them as administrators that's how i would describe them and ascendant uh, ascendant here you have additional bonuses uh, for captain retinue for corruption 
and nothing too different. You get a couple more um, local leader position, one additional one. And finally, when you reach Enlighten. So here you finally have the diplomatic option to vassalize and make alliance with regular factions. So at this point, you're pretty much close to playing as a regular faction, um, which is already kind of late. You know, by the time you reach Enlighten, you're probably running over the whole world. And finally, uh, yellow sky mandate so here is uh, how you win uh, you unite China by bringing all emperor seats under your control same as the base game uh, obviously you're not going to become an emperor yourself because you are uh, the pseudo cult uh, religious organization you believe in the yellow sky mandate uh, canceling out how emperors used to have the mandate and now the yellow turbans have the mandate and you have to also own 95 counties very similar to the regular game in terms of how to win the final part of the game. And if we take a look at the reform tree, because we actually can start researching reforms on turn one, it looks quite different. We have three scrolls. Now these three scrolls symbolizes the three scrolls that the original yellow turban leader uh, Zhang Jiao received from a uh, deity, basically a semi-god, a Taoist monk who gave him these three scrolls representing uh, the heaven or the sky, uh, the earth or the land, and the people. And these uh, scrolls are separate here, and each one, see this one, ultimately ends in heaven's humility. So this first scroll represents heaven, and this is why it's we got the free reform as Huang Shao, which represents heaven. On the flag banner, it has the Chinese character for a sky. And here, you have the people's compassion. So this scroll represents the people, representing the faction of He Yi. Uh, who specializes in population and replenishment. And lastly, we have the land's uh, frugality, which is representing earth or land. And this is Gongdu's faction's uh, specialization, which has the character D or land on their flag. So uh, if we look, they're separated by tiers, uh, a faction rank tier that we just talked about. So right now we can research any of these reforms on the left. Once we go up to balanced or the next faction tier, we can research any of these reforms in the next tier. And this is unlocked once we have healed and empowered and finally ascended. So they're locked by your faction rank. And luckily, none of them have any um, connection with each other. So once we unlock a rank, we can start researching any uh, of the reforms. So there's no prerequisite. Uh, to say so that's quite nice now a few things to note a lot of your units are locked away by reforms so for example uh, my favorite unit in the game the trebuchet well, not my favorite but most overpowered <laughs> unit in the game it's locked till you have healed it's locked by this uh, martial art practice so once we get healed we'll get this unit but before then we will not have access to trebuchets which will change a lot of our gameplay style uh, so right now we can choose from any of these on the side. Uh, they take four turns to research. This can be sped up by getting more research rate. We Luckily, we have 115. I think the 10% extra is from our faction being Huang Shao, which has the dominion of Huang Shao bonus. And the other 5% we already saw from uh, Guan Hai, who has the philosopher background, which gives us another 5%. Um, and you can see what you get out of these reforms. You get enlightenment points. Right, all these give you 10 enlightenment point plus something else. So really, we have to just consider the something else. The enlightenment point's always there. Um, if we start with our heaven representation here, we get two units. Uh, they look pretty bad. Um, none of them are holding a shield. So uh, we can take a look at what they are. They're militia of virtue. You know, this unit, as you can see from the morale bar, has unbreakable. So it's quite nice, but no shield means no um, defense against. Uh, range units, which makes them even weak to archer militias. I don't really like them that much. Now, Chanters is a very interesting unit. They boost um, your other units around them. They're kind of like a mini general that gives buffs. Um, they're interesting. We'll definitely play around with these once we get there, but we're not going to research this first. Uh, this one gives a flat 4% satisfaction. Uh, it's decent. This one gives the character experience. So both of these kind of represent our playstyle, right? Getting more characters and getting them high level. So that's why we are the heaven side of things. If we look at people, this one also gives you two units. It gives you a cavalry unit, which is strange because uh, if we have to summarize the weakness of uh, yellow turbans is that 
we're really bad at cavalry. We don't have many cavalry units with us. But this unit is quite nice because you can see it's a spear cavalry unit and it's a medium uh, size so it's nice it has nice armor and it also carries a shield so it has some range protection so with very good charge damage uh, this is a very good all-around uh, cavalry unit it's a little expensive in the upkeep side but we can consider this once we get this one and we also get the wife wave veterans uh, so these guys are your typical uh, sword shield type of infantry and let's see the population growth uh, we don't think we need that one. This one gives a 10% discount to peasant housing and labor housing. So these are two of our building chains. Uh, someone who likes commander building, this one is a little tempting, but we're going to hold back on that. This one unlocks two additional unit uh, reclaimers. The, this is our main missile defense troop. So this is what I will compare to the spear guards. Uh, very good unit, 50% range block chance, decent armor. Uh, decent attack actually, a good armor based attack, very similar to the spear guards. And this guy is our uh, light bow cavalry uh, horseback archers basically, skirmishers. Uh, I typically don't use these guys very much, very poor charge damage, these units are just very low statted. So unless you want to play a very harassment style, it takes a lot of microing which isn't really possible on legendary difficulty where you can't pause the battlefield. Lastly, we have proactive planning. Uh, this one's a favorite of a lot of people. <laughs> it has 10% campaign movement range, which always seems very OP as you can catch people off guard and also it's just the quality of life thing. And lastly, this one gives 10% extra income from looting settlements and 10% post battle income. I actually like this one the most. Uh, it gives you the most money early game. And this is always going to be helpful going forward because you're at war with everybody. So I would typically vote between these two. And in this case, I'm going to research this one. All right, confiscate belongings. Basically looting po post battle. Let's not make it sound so fancy. And you can see we'll get that after four turns. And let's take a look at what Anzeri item we got. Oh, we got the Kendrick Den for free. Why are we doing the mission? And we got the Book of Ceremonies, which adds 8% eight eight authority and 8 uh, satisfaction, plus 4 public water when you're administering a commandery. And we probably should look at our court scene as well. There are no families in the old turban. Um, I don't know why the game decided this way, <laughs> but this is the way things are. And that's fine, because we get a lot of generals. Uh, and we can look at our characters, which is, this is very sim, uh, same thing as the regular menu. Uh, in terms of our court, uh, we have three tiers here. So local leaders, we're already kind of seeing. Uh, these are basically our administrators. And then we have uh, these great something, great healer, great commander, great learned one. So they represent the veteran class, the, heal, uh, the healer class, and the scholar class, right? And they can be uh, given out once you reach the rank of healed. And these guys obviously represent the people, land, and heaven. Now these are uh, higher tier himself. And you can see here, it, it even talks about in the lore, originally a title uh, held by uh, Zhang Zhu. Wait, Zhang Zhu? Zhu Yunqun? Zhang Jun? Wait, Zhang Bao? Zhang Jiao? Zhang Liang? Shouldn't this be Zhang Jiao? Huh. Interesting. Maybe I have the facts wrong. Anyways, these are the three original brothers who started the Yellow Turban. Uh, that's uh, mentioned here in the lore. And they were given the title of General of the Land, General of the People, General of Heaven when they started the rebellion. Uh, but we can uh, give these out uh, a bit later. I think once you reach... Uh, once you research the final reform on the each scroll, basically. We talked about these reform earlier. Okay. Yeah, and we're going to learn about these as we go on, because uh, I'm learning with you guys. So, we got the Kendrick Jian, which is his upgraded weapon, which is going to equip it to him. Lucky us. And we can see Huang Shao here. He's a very, very good leader. Um, ignore the colors. Uh, they give them these mixed color wheels, but they don't really represent much. And we can just say they get some uh, more expertise and authority points, perhaps. Uh, we get Burnt as a trait. You know how much we like Burnt. And tr uh, Tranquil is very nice too. Plus 5 armor on retinue, plus 3% uh, replenishment. 
Honest is good as a faction leader because you get minus 5% corruption. And we already saw the range unit uh, discount to upkeep and extra morale. Um, our tree is a little weird, uh, but if we look here, we have uh, these two skills are the ones that we have in the base game, so I'm not going to talk much about them. Uh, we do have these new skills that has, you know, Tian. Here's the character for Sky. This one's the character for Earth, uh, Sky as well. Uh, so basically, we get these, and here's the people. So these three symbols represent yellow turban skills. And these are the ones I'm more interested in. So here we have minus one local construction time. So whatever county he's standing in gets minus one construction time. That's a very different gameplay mechanism than the base game. Recovery. I think this one's really OP. So if you can find a character with recovery and unbreakable, you can win a battle forever just by kiting, like on a general. Because you can just run around, heal up. It's really slow heal, but you can heal up and charge back in again and get more damage. But unfortunately, Huang Shao here doesn't have unbreakable, uh, but maybe we'll pick it up from our trait somewhere. Inspiration, uh, plus 6% income from commerce factional wide so as long as we have this skill unlocked you're stacking six percent commerce factional wide and you can pick up similar uh traits on other generals as well so you could be stacking your income on generals so this makes command rebuilding uh, very different uh, and you can supercharge your income by having a huge roster of characters and this, the bottom three, uh, one, three, five positions are where we have our active abilities. So here we have surprise attack, um, which is very nice. It's a nice boost to surrounding troops to cause fear and stock. Stock basically keeps your troops hidden until they attack an enemy up close. The one we have is one with heaven, which is an infinite duration buff. So as long as we're standing next to the unit within 75 meters, we'll get this boost of 25 additional range damage which plays really well with how uh, we feature our range playstyle with our Bruin trait and with our decent cunning. We could work on this one. And here we have fanaticism. Uh, this is just a typical unit boosting measure. The 5% replenishment is really nice. Focus gives uh, increased range uh, armor piercing damage, which is nice. Increased range damage overall plus 3% from industry. So this one seems the best one for me, probably what we're going to go for uh, first. Uh, very similar to Precision, except for I think it's just better than Precision. Um, the plus 10 firing rate is what we're missing out on, so we're probably going to get that as well. Insight, extra research rate, extra block range block chance on himself, so decent. Our third uh, active ability is uh, plus 100% range block chance, kind of like the, um, I guess, what is it called? Uh, Liu Bei has it when he starts the game. Uh, this one also gives you minus 20% fatigue. Uh, decent skill. So that's our leader over here. Uh, let's see if we can give his sword to anyone. Nope, he uses a range unit. He uses a long weapon. And he uses a, a mace here. So we can just keep the other sword in our pocket. Uh, let's just focus on him right now because we're going to be battling with him. And we also got this book. Uh, it's kind of wasted on him because he's our leader. Even though, like, say if we give him plus eight points, the satisfaction is still plus three. So rather than doing that, we'll give it to Pei Wen Shao over here, who's already mad at us because we're playing on legendary. So there's that ten, uh, ten points debuff on general discontent. So we can put him on here. So he's a little bit happier with us. So for yellow turbans, we can't rank up to make them happier, right? because we don't have the option to spend money to give them artificial ranks. They have to learn the heavenly ways to level up. So we have to keep them happy with items. Uh, but don't worry, there's plenty of items in the game. And most generals are expendable. But in the case of Pei Shao here, he is one of our legendary uh, generals, so we're going to keep him happy. So with that all said, I think we're finally ready to play the game. <laughs> let's play and let's fight this first battle. Uh, we can just take Huang Shao over here and start fighting here. Now, since everything's very new to us, even the units, we're going to be battling on the battlefield just to get a feel of how these units play. So let's start. Okay, we're loaded up in here. I guess we're up facing each other on two opposing hills. Uh, we know his units don't have any range unit in them. Two Axe Band, I believe. 
So we can definitely pelt them with our um, archery match, uh, archery masters. Um, we're just gonna try to maximize our range damage, and these guys can be our frontline troops. Now, who's a bit better in close range combat? So these guys have good charge damage, so we should charge them at the enemy. This guy should just probably keep our uh, archers safe, right? We can protect against the enemy general's charge by having braced spear units here. Now, Huang Shao over here, should we have him duel? That's my question. Or should we just have him sit here and boost the archers? We have a decent attack rate. Our weapon's okay because we got the upgraded version. High melee evasion, so it's kind of like a sentinel. Good armor. Morale's a little lacking. Maybe we won't have him duel the other sentinel because it'll be really slow. I think we'll just try to get our um, units into do the fighting for us. They're somewhere over there. Ah, we see them. Okay. Mm, let's get this set up properly. Alright, so we want the archers to shoot. These guys are just braced defending against the enemy general left and right flank to charge at their axe bands right this way we pull off our 88 charge damage and then we can hack with them mm, preferably we just kill them with the archers I don't think we want to duel him actually he has really poor weapon we can actually fight a duel with him but I want to duel him close to my archer so I still provide the bonus. So we'll duel with him when he gets close. Alright, we'll decline first. When he's like right here, we'll accept. Alright, we're just gonna watch our guy shoot them. The firing rate's pretty nice. Yeah, pretty nice firing rate. Accuracy can use a little work. Alright, they're taking a lot of damage though. That's good. Nope, still decline. Not close enough. Somewhere after he walks into our circle. We'll say when we can duel. Oh, he's ready? Okay, okay. Is he charging it? Alright, now we can duel. I don't think we need to actually engage our units into combat. I think we can... Oh, he got the melee evasion buff. Alright, to prevent our guys from killing our own guys, we're going to stop shooting at that unit. We want to work out of flank. We don't want to crowd our units for no reason. A back charge would be nice. Just keep shooting that guy. Alright, we routed him. Now let's just watch our general fight. Oh, got kicked in the face. Alright, we kick back. That's right. Oh, come on. It's embarrassing. Everyone's watching. Ooh. I thought he was going to take his arm off. It's funny because we have the same animation, right? We have the same animation as the Sentinel. We're just kicking each other. I like the detail in his cloak. Right here we see the eight, um, well, Bakwa. I don't know what's called in English. Eight triangrams? 
and the, in the center is the uh, Liang. Ooh, nice. We beheaded him. Basically, a Daoist symbol on his cloak. Very nice. All right, we can claim victory here. Alrighty, another beheading outside. And pretty clean. We lost four men. And we're just going to take some extra income. So we completed this mission and got our Kendrick Jian, or sword. And then we got additional experience on Huang Shao. And we get a new mission. Huang Shao finds those whose vision align with the cause. Maintain a total of one of the following types. Yellow Turban Spear Captain. Okay. So basically we're recruiting a captain unit retinue. And you get some additional experience as well as treasury, 10, 1,000 gold. And we get our first challenge. Seek to enlighten more to the cause. Capture and occupy any settlements, 2,000 gold. Okay. And we get an uncommon talent. So we can recruit a new general. It's free. Uh, the general might have a salary, but I don't think they actually do. I think the game designer just got lazy and kept the same... Uh, uh, the the script here as the base game uh, for non yellow turban characters because as you can see we don't have a salary situation at the follower rank um, a captain in your army display exceptional understanding and control over their chi oh this sounds like one of those old Jackie Chan movies uh, each f movement flow effortlessly to the next making them an exceptional warrior on the battlefield and candidate for promotion yeah let's promote them let's see who has the mastery over their chi T yeah. Let's see. Who do we get? Okay, Yujin. Yujin is a monk and a veteran. Uh starts out unhappy with us. And also we have to note the armor. None of the armors are uh equipable. They're all bounded, and I think they level up as you level up their rank. Or at least that's how I think it works. Um So armor smith are worthless to yellow turbans, because none of the yellow turbans have armor. So he is a monk, which doesn't give us any good bonuses right away, right? Plus five military supply only if he is Lord of Virtue or faction leader. Although it says legendary, he doesn't have any legendary stats. So he will, this, this gold title will go away next turn. He also doesn't have any interesting skills oh plus 50 percent post battle loot that's quite high enables fire arrows range armor piercing damage disorient very good so this immobilizes the enemy general let's say you're fighting and you can just use this on them and it just disables them stand in spot uh, I like that guy. Yeah, I actually... Hmm. I'm debating whether we should keep him or throw him away. And as you can see here, because he has this skill, he's giving us two enlightenment points, right? So also this one. So we got four new enlightenment points because we got him. So we also have to balance the fact that we got four enlightenment points and we don't want to uh, reach a super high enlightenment point so that we rank up and potentially lose our book. Mm, so I think we're just going to get rid of him. We can also debate which one we should pick up here. All these will give us enlightenment points. These won't. Favorable skies, not that useful. Surprise attack is pretty good, actually. Hmm, recovery is really good. And also, you get plus 3% income from peasantry. We'll decide this a bit later. We're gonna get rid of him. I don't think we should keep him. Because he's also unhappy with us, he's also giving us this debuff on character experience and corruption. Uh, which is, I mean, it's not a big deal now, but I'd rather not have it. Oh, sorry. Keep going the wrong place. Hmm. 
Hmm. Minus five satisfaction. Could we take that? Mm, probably not. Neither of them are very happy with us. So we're just going to release him. Didn't cost us anything. Let's look at our commanderies. So here we have the same uh, fishing port. Note here it gives 10% agriculture uh, cost reduction. We mentioned this on the commandery guide that I did a long time ago. That yellow turban buildings do not give any wuxing synergies. So there's no longer discounts because you have one color. Uh, there's no discount for another color. But the base game buildings, like the harbor and the iron mine, will still give you the same uh, discounts. So we can enjoy the discount of our counties, but we can't. Uh, synergize within uh, the building which is kind of weird actually because if you think about it let's say iron mines a poor example but let's say taishan taishan has a trade port so it's a commerce building right because it's a commerce building it's giving an agricultural discount so if we want to save money on the building we are building we should be building agricultural buildings but because the county is commerce we should actually be building commerce buildings so you see how that logic loop is a little broken so we should probably just ignore Wuxing synergies as playing as yellow turbans so don't clearly is going to be a uh, uh, industry commandery with a little bit of uh, commerce because of the fishing port so of all these building choices i particularly love the forge um, we mentioned this also in the commandery guide i think this is the most broken building in the game for yellow turbans because if you look at the requirements for forges there's only two upgrade options. It's super cheap to build, right? A thousand, two thousand. It's pretty cheap. And what you get is you get a flat industry income and an industry uh, per a multiplier and 10% replenishment. So 10% replenishment by itself is broken, right? We've seen what replenishment can do. Not only that, when you get the upgraded version, which requires no reforms, right? Look at it. There's no reform requirement. And all you need your city to be is a small city. Actually, this doesn't, oh, it doesn't say here because we're already a small city. But there's basically no requirement to building this. You get military supplies, you get 160 industry income, which is quite decent. It's decent for a level 2 building, 160 income. And 20% boost from uh, industry income multiplier. That's basically a level 4 private workshop amount of boost. And you get 160 base industry income. And 20% replenishment on top of that. Just game breaking in my opinion so we're definitely going to be building this uh here in don't and in taishan we are given a wine vendor which is basically an in building i believe yep this is basically an in building uh it's a little different you get public order satisfaction and commerce income Everything's a little bit different. If you are confused, there is a yellow turban building overview guide on the channel. Uh, just search up the better commander guide videos and you'll see them. The school building surprisingly is the same. Uh, the game got pretty lazy because I think school building actually logistically doesn't make sense for yellow turbans. It should be more like a religious education rather than a typical uh, education here. Uh, communal trade, uh, it's very similar to the marketplace. Except for there is no more upkeep cost, which is nice. Um, here in Taishan, what we're probably going to end up doing is a mix of uh, commerce income and peasantry income. Because the trade port also gives us a bonus to uh, peasantry income as well. It doesn't solve the problem of what I'm going to build here. I'm still a bit confused of what we're going to go for. We could also go industry Right, trade port has that option at level five to go mix commerce and industry. And I love the forge building. Yeah, I think we're gonna actually commit to uh, spamming the forge building. So let's do that. Now, Pei Wenshaw over here, we need to find something for him to do. So now we're talking about grand strategy of things. Although down here you see that we're surrounded by friendly yellow turban factions, right? Yellow turban rebellion factions. We know, oh, actually, Liu Bei is starting right here with a giant army and Guan Yu and Zhang Fei. So he's going to take this down and then he's going to become our number one problem in the early game because his army is pretty much unbeatable. 
We need to come up with an army that can take out Liu Bei, Guan Yu, and Zhang Fei. That's our dilemma number one in the early game. So we can probably get rid of his tag. And to our west, we have Liu Dai in, in Chuan farmland. Uh, it says he's a rash fellow, rarely listen to his advisors. We can use this against him when the time is right. He is one of those small factions that's probably not going to be super aggressive, so we can ignore him. Now, He Yi, we know, is down there on the map. Gong Du is down there. These are two yellow turban friends. This is ourself, Kong Rong. Kong Rong is probably our first target. So we played Kong Rong's early game guy, so we know yellow turban's a big issue with Kong Rong, right? So you have, he's surrounded by yellow turbans to start the game. And we're probably going to wipe him out first because we don't want him to go to the late game. Kong Rong in the late game is a nightmare with his uh, Fury of Beihai and Thunder of Jian'an, so we're going to probably wipe him out early. Yuan Shao to the north is probably going to attack our Henei farmland eventually, right? He's right here. So we're going to lose this land. It's okay. And we're going to hold him off here in Dong. Now, one thing that's good about Yellow Turbans is that the garrison units are very strong, right? Typical garrison units are pretty weak, but we get pretty decent garrison units, I have to say. So we're going to try to hold them off here in Dong. And we don't care about the captive empire, uh, emperor, and we don't care about Luoyang being burnt. Hmm, so I kind of want to use uh, Pei Wen Shao as a unit. And we kind of want him to join Huang Shao. But we probably don't want to keep these units. We probably want to reduce some costs and build the economy a bit earlier. So what I'm going to do is actually disband his group and recall Pei Wen Shao away from the map. Now oh, these are quite nice, but... So the, the goal here is so that we can just summon him into his army wherever he is at the end of the turn. Dong should be safe early on. I don't think Liu Bei would just do a 180 after taking Dong's Iron Mine. And Yuan Shao is a little far from us right now. So we're going to focus our target onto Kong Rong and Bei Hai. And since we're pretty healthy, right, we only lost four units in that fight. We can probably march and get us really close to the location. Right, and then we can recruit our uh, spear captain retinue, which was part of the mission. And we can also pop Pei Wan Shao in here as well next turn. And this should do decently well for our economy as well. Yeah, we got an extra Kendrick Jian, but we can't use it. In terms of leveling up, still haven't decided how to deal with this. I still think recovery is pretty OP, even though we can't utilize the peasantry income boost. Commerce is good. See, this is really good, but this is only going to be applied onto our Archer Masters. We don't have enough money to switch out these units. Because I would like to switch most of them to Archer units. Hmm. Quite the dilemma here. I think we're going to commit to refocus and we can try to switch the units a little bit later. Ah, we see Koro. And an army that we can't beat. So I hope the AI does his normal thing and fight his missions. All right, so that's our turn one. Took quite a while, but let's continue. All right, so turn two, um, Koro has gone on with his uh, missions and taken over Beihai's livestock farm. Liu Bei has taken over Dong's iron mine. We are surrounded by enemies. And we can recruit Pei Wen Shao for free. Oh, we have a general in our... Um, we got a free general. <laughs> and we can get a spear captain unit for 2,090 gold, which is just the amount we have. And we can satisfy that mission. And we can also uh, get a 1,000 gold back because there's going to be a discount there. So let's do that. Uh, why do we get a new general? 
doesn't say. It just gave us a free general. Okay. I'm down. Let's see if he's good. Uh, tolerant, not so good. Vain, it's okay. He is a philosopher, though. So keeping him will give us additional 5% research rate. So we're now at 120. I like that. He's unhappy with us. Can't do anything about that. He gives replenishment rate, armor piercing damage, disorient. I think we'll just hold on to him for that extra 5% boost. I don't think it's going to impact the speed. Yeah, it's still three more turns. It's not high enough to impact the speed, but we're also not close to reaching our next tier yet. So we can hold on to him. If he gets so mad that he leaves, then so be it. Over here, we can start playing around with our army composition as well. So we can't afford our tree masters. Look how expensive they are. But we can afford, uh, eventually we can afford um, yellow turban archers. We can't just straight up attack him. Hmm. All right, we want to switch them over. Let's see if it's worth the upgrade. Actually, we can just stick to peasant archers. The morale is not very different, and we're not going to get them into close combat. So the difference really is amount of ammo rather than actual range damage, right? Firing rate is a little different, 15 versus 12, and the ammo is the biggest difference here. The base attack damage and armor piercing damage is the same. So we're going to save money by going with these guys. Uh, probably should have disbanded these guys last turn. Could have saved us a little bit more gold. So we're going to get rid of these guys. Right, this is our front line. Very bad front line, but that's our front line. And eventually over here for Pavenshaw, we're probably going to go with archers as well. All right, we're going to save money and we're going to pump out. Let's see how many archers we're talking about. We're talking about 11 archers. All right, we're going to have enough money to do that. And then we're going to... Yeah, and then we're going to attack Beihai after we replenish up. I think the replenishment rate is pretty decent. Three turns? Okay. All right, so let's stay on defensive. We got our buildings built. This one got built quicker because Huang Shao is in the commandery, I believe. Yeah, minus one construction time if he's standing in the commandery. Uh, we're out of money, so we gotta save money for our first army. Let's go. Uh, we probably should get a thousand gold next turn because we did recruit a spear captain retinue. Let's continue. All right, we completed this mission, paid us a thousand gold, got a little more experience, got a new mission, recruit and maintain a total of twenty units. Okay, we're currently at 10, and we get a spear. Don't know why we need a spear, but okay, and we get more experience, so that's good. So I thought of something. Because we're food, um, we're good on food even without this commandery, because we do produce two food from the fishing port here, which is enough to sustain the small city, and we have more food options once we get livestock farm. What we can do here in a land that we're going to lose, we can downgrade. Oh, it only refunds one gold, but it will reduce the upkeep from 40 to 20. Hmm. Oh, no, the refund is, yeah, the refund is 450. Good. Why did it show one gold earlier? No idea, but we'll get 450 gold back and it'll be cheaper per turn and we'll still get the same amount of food, basically. No point to give Renshaw such a good commandery. Military instructor, okay. He is our veteran, so he is probably going to be doing most of the fighting for us. Scholarly, fatigue resistance, immune to scare, scarring. A scaring? Scarring, <laughs> scaring. And 5% speed, 5% movement rate, okay. Let's give it to him. We didn't look at his skills. Yeah, but he also boosts range damage. That's good. On yielding earth. That's pretty good. Ooh, wisdom of the river. This is an interesting combination. Okay. Decent, decent, decent. Okay, sure. 
Let's pump out some units. We're gonna pump out peasant archers. Alright, good. We still have plenty of money. We just gotta wait till they replenish to a decent amount before we go attack Beihai. We can upgrade this for more satisfaction, public order, and commerce income. Mm, this is probably the most worth it, actually. Let's do that. We got another general. Okay, Zhuge Nan. Somehow he became happy. He got recently hired all of a sudden. Okay, so I guess he will get recently hired as well. Alright, he's getting pretty pissed off at us. He's actually pretty good. And he's a philosopher. Potter. Do we want a potter? He doesn't bring us any immediate bonuses. He also doesn't bring us any good traits. Ooh, minus one construction time. Okay, okay, here's our plan. Here's our plan. We can raise an army. We can spend a thousand gold. Well, that's kind of expensive. I guess it's always spend a thousand gold to pull them out unless they have no retinue. So the idea was pull him out, right, for a thousand gold, and then if we build it, we save a turn. But then we don't have the money to build it. So maybe not. I'll keep him. I'll keep him. I'll keep him for the potential to reduce construction time, right? It's technically assignment, right? It's your sentinel assignment, but just having the general on the field. So that's pretty good. We can definitely use him to build up this commander. So we'll keep him as well. Right now we're just poor. Once we get more money, we'll be fine. All right, this is pretty bad army to be honest. You know, we can't, we're definitely not going to be able to fight Liu Bei. But knowing how Liu Bei typically expands, he goes for Long Ya. So as long as we stick up here, we should be fine. Kong Rong usually goes over here. So let's wait another turn. Let's continue. Uh, yeah, we did that. Let's continue. All right, so we finished the 20 unit mission. We got a spear. And we didn't get any more new missions. Kind of sad about that. Ooh, okay. We got the nine chapters on mathematical art. The plus six satisfaction is great. The archery bonus from more cunning is great. And the spear we just got. So here we'll give him additional cunning to give him extra ammo. Now is the spear better than the mace? 1k armor piercing damage. A little bit slower attack speed, nigh resolve, six instincts, six expertise. This one might be actually better. But the mace is such an iconic weapon, I think we're just gonna keep it on him. Oh, we got another character. So this thing's like one character a turn. So why would we ever recruit from the pool? Well, because he's level four. Okay. Yeah, but we can't keep him happy. I doubt we can keep him happy. Got a scholar, farmer. Alright, modest is good. But that's that's not why they're unhappy with us. They're unhappy with us because of general discontent. Ooh, plus 6% from commerce income faction Why just by having him. Alright, we just gotta keep an eye on this balance thing. We're almost... We're almost at our new reform. One more turn, right? Okay, so we almost got our legendary book. So we have a bit of money now. We can implement our plan to put him out on the field. Right, if we get rid of his army, then we basically have him free here on the map as an assignment. Right, because he's here in Dong, Dong will be it will take only three turns to build stuff so we can test that actually right i can cancel get the thousand gold back and put it on again it should just be three turns it should be the same let's test it yep it's three turn so it didn't cost us anything to, to test this out all right nice uh, which one's better though 
80 additional gold, 20 additional temp. Yeah, this one's better. Definitely get this. Okay. We're almost ready to attack the town. I think we'll wait one more turn. Or maybe the full two turns. Alright, let's wait one more turn. Let's go. Okay, we got our book, but there's been the development as well. Um, we got our first reform. Good for us. We can pick out our second reform. Campaign movement range? Maybe. Satisfaction seems pretty good too. There's really no unit I really want. So maybe we can pay movement range first. So our first problem is Liu Bei has peaked out here. So he is probably coming after us because he's pretty friendly with Kongrong. The good news is we have an army. The bad news is they have an army too. And their generals really OP. So we have to loop them around the town to beat them. Pretty sure that's how we have to approach this. He's a bit unhappy with us. We could use another general. All right, technically we could put him out here. And he can at least disorient a general for us. We don't need we don't need his retinue. Inner fire. We have enough gold to put out one general. Well, we're definitely not fighting him on the field. We we only place we can fight him is at this town. We could also ambush him. I'm trying to think of how we can beat him. We definitely need the town's arrow tower. If we go into the town and get sieged, it's a little awkward. Alright, we're going to pull him back here. We're going to raise him because he's unhappy because of lack of purpose. So we'll give him a purpose. Alright, he can defend the town. So because the town is technically pretty weak. Alright, so this gives us the option to break the siege if he just sieges. And if he opens the attack on the town, we can at least reinforce. Yeah, logically makes sense to me. Let's see how that works out. And I think that's that's everything we can do here. We got a, I, oh, we got the book. Who should get the book? Somehow I think he should get the book. Because he will give the most satisfaction, which is what we need on him. He has a ton of archers, but his cunning is a little bit low. So this will help his cunning. Expertise will help him in his fighting. And the income and everything will be applied to the commandery. This book, we will give to someone else who's unhappy. Right, so this will take away our low satisfaction issue. Because everyone's least satisfied. Next turn. It refreshes next turn, I think. Um, I think this is pretty good. Uh, we're going to also end our episode here. Leave a little cliffhanger of what happens when Liu Bei attacks us. Because I think that's going to be a pretty grand battle. And um, that's going to determine our early game. Basically, if he crushes us, I think our campaign fails. <laughs> but I think we'll win. And it should open things up because we'll be able to take some of their awesome items. Uh, we know what legendary gear they're holding. Oh, Foreman's really nice too. So let's look forward to that 
uh, in episode two and hope you guys enjoy this uh, very calm opening uh, battle uh, opening episode of our new let's play we just basically learned a little bit about the yellow turban faction and got us into uh, this position right here so come back next episode and see how we get ourselves out of this mess see y'all then bye